Dismantling a Stuart Victoria steam plant. This is part one. The introduction and the reason behind wanting to do this job and the dismantling begins. Why am I seemingly destroying a perfectly good steam plant? The reason is quite simple. If they're above a certain size and the boiler is on the same baseboard as the engine, the entire plant becomes very heavy. And in my humble opinion, it really doesn't look good. In the full size, the boiler was not right next to the engine, it was usually in another area altogether. That is, unless the boiler and steam plant were in an Edwardian style riverboat. It's all a matter of personal taste. If you look at things like Mamods and Willescos, they always have the boiler right next to the steam engine. But they are only very small steam toys, and they have very little in common with steam plants of this size, although they can be good fun to play with. This boiler that you're looking at is called a Scotch return tube boiler. This one has a cross water tube flue down the middle, plus two extra flues where the gases can return to the chimney at the same end as the burner. This clip shows the superheater element inside because I've opened the door. There's enough room in there to put another coil of copper tubing as a water preheater. When I first bought this steam plant, the steam went straight up the chimney, complete with the steam oil, and it made a sound like a fish and chip shop frying tonight. Because it's not only steam that goes up the chimney, it's oil residue which comes out with the exhaust. That's why I built this large condenser oil trap to stop that. The exhaust steam is piped into this condenser oil trap and the oil remains in the tank. And periodically you do have to drain this tank into a suitable receptacle for disposal. It's a very simple device, a piece of copper tube and these two really nice gunmetal end caps. You can get these from Blackgate's Engineering. At the side of the boiler is a very nice example of a Stuart hand pump. Even though these Stuart hand pumps are quite popular, I don't really care for them because the ram is too small. To fill this 5 inch diameter boiler would take a long time using the hand pump. And it's not like a coal fired locomotive where the hand pump is for emergency. As this is a gas fired boiler, if you accidentally get low water, all you do is turn the gas off. I'm going to remove this pump and put it in my box of old hand pumps. And I will use one of Chris English's hand pumps with a much larger ram. When I bought this engine, the water and steam piping was done very well, with brackets holding the piping to the baseboard. I added the PM Research cast elbows because I like them. The construction of this steam plant is a little bit bizarre, really. Look how many countersunk screws are used just to hold the top metal plates onto the wood. To save time, rather than unbolting the exhaust pipe from the engine, I just used a cutting disc in my Proxon motor tool and chopped it off like this, being very careful to control the cutter as it broke through the pipe. Now can move the condenser out of the way altogether. I actually do like this plant, it runs very well, but this boiler is just so wasted on a Stuart Victoria. A Stuart Victoria will run quite satisfactorily on a Stuart 500 boiler, which is very small. I'll just show you the construction of the condenser. It has a steam inlet in the centre and a steam outlet at the right hand side and a drain tap at the left hand side. What you can't see on the drain tap inside the condenser is a long piece of silicone rubber tubing with a weight on the end. This is called a clunk and clunks are used in model aircraft to make sure that the fuel is always picked up from the bottom of the tank. This is quite a good example of a Stuart Victoria. It runs quite well, but it always did have a bit of a knock. In a future video, I will show you how I fix this. The exhaust pipe that I chopped off, I'm now refitting. You'll see this in more detail shortly in another episode. This Stuart Victoria has a really neat pump. It's driven from the crankshaft and it works perfectly. It just puts enough water into the boiler when the engine is running to keep the water level constant. The baseboard is made in two halves, one for the boiler and one for the engine. It is very well made, if not over engineered slightly. I wondered what the two pipes were in the centre, and then it dawned on me what they were for. These two pipes are used to drain any condensate, or oil, from inside the main engine bed plate. The only problem is though, the pipes just go to the back of the baseboard, so instead of having condensate and oil in the bed plate of the engine, 
All the mess just pours out of the back of the baseboard onto a table or bench or whatever you're running the engine on. Once again I used my Proxon motor tool, this time with a diamond cutter and just chopped off the piping as you can see here. If you're a bit of a purist and you're feeling horrified by watching this, you're probably better off skipping this episode and watching something else. The main baseboard with the steel tops were originally made using some square pieces of steel which were originally from something else. The last piece of pipe to go is the drain from the water gauge's blowdown valve. This union nut was very tight, but eventually it came loose. I've noticed that the two check valves and these two inspection points use aluminium washers. They're looking a bit corroded, so I'm going to change them for copper washers. When I open the blowdown valve, even though there is clearly some water in the boiler, not a drop comes out of the blowdown outlet, and when I remove the valve, nothing comes out of there either. Here I'm using a piece of silver solder rod just to make sure that this fitting isn't blocked. More about this in another episode. The hand pump is still in place and I need to cut the pipe on this because it's been soldered in. The part that I'm currently handling is the water bypass valve from the pump and it's been chewed up with pliers over the years. Here once again I'm using my Proxon motor tool fitted with a diamond cutter to cut this piece of pipe that's just been soldered into the inlet of the pump. I'll resurrect this Stuart hand pump in a future episode, because they are quite nice things really. Plus very shortly it looks like I'm going to have a surplus of Stuart boilers and bits and pieces to play around with. Have a look at this shot of the underside of the baseboard. These quite thick metal plates look like they were made from something else that was designed to slide and the machine parts are where you put your fingers in to make them move. I wonder if anyone out there knows exactly what they were originally from. They're all a bit surplus to my requirements, but I'm removing the brackets. I can reuse these. I'll put them into my box of old random brackets. Here are a couple more that held part of the water piping. This base is far heavier than it needs to be. Very well made, I can't knock that, but it's no good for what I need. I'm only interested in the boiler, because I do have a use for it. I think it will be a perfect marine boiler for the Stuart triple expansion engine that I'm currently working on. But that's it for now, more about that in future episodes. Stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.